Ah, thanks for staying with us. Now, Nigeria, a third world country in Africa, is known as the poverty capital of the world. The nation just exceeded India with the largest rate of people living in extreme poverty. Now, in Nigeria, about 86.9 million people live in severe poverty, which is about 50% of its entire population. While the nation is smaller, both geographically and in terms of population, it is is failing at lowering the rates of poverty now. Uh, or sorry, it is still failing at lowering the rate of poverty. Now, this is partly due to mismanagement of the oil resources, of course, that we all know, and the presence of corruption. And this was a report that we saw on an, on an online magazine. So with the rate of um, this poverty rate that we have talked about, you know, and if we want to, and the rate at which the COVID-19 virus is spreading, you know, and costing for the testing is, a, is, is placed at 50,000 naira, and treatment is even beyond, <laughs> beyond that. How would we stop the, 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 the spread of this COVID-19 in the, in the bid to fight it, you know, within a country that is so, um, that is living with so many people in poverty, about 86.9 million people? That's the question today. So we're hoping that we'll be able to find con um, solutions to how we can bring down the cost of te testing so that more people will be tested. So you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Show Africa one with the hashtag Show, or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-8463. I'm going to bring in Dr. Yemisi in a bit, but I just wanted to hear your thoughts and if we possibly have Mori back, um, her thoughts as well. What do you think, you know? First of all, have you had any reason to go do a COVID test? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know. Put me on this spot this night. <laughs> like, I, let me pretend like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if I'm being 100% honest, um, two or three weeks ago, I had uh, a COVID scare. Um, I had some of the symptoms, symptoms yeah. wasn't a lot but i just felt ah i've been going out though mm. it has to be it so i decided to actually um isolate although i didn't have um i didn't lose any of my senses so i could taste i could smell all of that but i had cold mm. and i and the cold was prolonging i'm like ah, Wow. <laughs> so I was like, okay, maybe I should actually go do a test. I mean, I've been isolating for two weeks, and um, I have a flatmate, and she's okay. Maybe I should go do a test. And then I hear, oh, it is 50 grand. And I was thinking, hmm. So I spend 50K. So mm -hmm. if I spend 50K to do a test, and it's positive, mm -hmm. I would also have to treat myself, which is extra cost. Now, depending on the hospital, I end up going to... So, and I'm looking at it, I don't exactly have this money mm -hmm. at the moment to mm -hmm. spend. So, how am I going to do it? Mm -hmm. So, I think it actually now dawned on me, like, <laughs> now, wow. <laughs> this is Jennifer yes. that is earning a salary. <laughs> I earn salary. There's a problem in this And I'm country. having a problem paying 50 grand for a test that I know that I would definitely spend so much more if I am positive. So, what about people who are not earning that much? Or people who are living from hand to mouth what happens so you get the COVID. how do you so are they saying that they would not get treated mm. so you see that's why um the average man you see on the street and you ask them about covid 19 they tell you it's a, it's a rich man disease because i don't get how a disease that is just like malaria why the testing will not be you know brought down to a reasonable cost um, you know yeah. you are saying that this Every day, I mean, I was throughout this holiday um, weekend. I I I went on a, like a retreat, and ev I was watching uh, what's it called CNN. Everything you hear, COVID, 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 COVID. And guess what? This thing they keep saying, oh, it's spreading like there's another third wave coming. There's this one coming. There's one. so you already know that this thing is it, like it is very vicious in terms of spread, yeah. right? Especially that's like the second, the second um, strain wave, that yeah. came. It's very, very you know, it's quick to spread. You already know this. So why would a reasonable government not be thinking of bringing down because. as the way you will go and test for malaria, maybe five hundred naira or three hundred naira or something? I don't know. You should be able to test that way it's because tough. COVID. You know how what is most annoying about COVID for me. Akanimot was going to travel to, to, for holiday, right? She was going out to, of the country. Before she traveled, you know, by the time I calculated the test alone, she alone did, you know, it's over 400, almost 500K. Because you will test before you go. When you get yeah, there, you, you will test. But when you, she said test. the only test that was free was the one she did in Dubai. Yeah, Dubai is Do you understand? Free. That was the only test that she did that was free. Every other test that she did, she had to pay. And this is outside of two of her children that had to do the test the as test well. Too. 
Do you get? So by the time she came back, when she now got a message that, oh, somebody tested positive and all that, you know, it, so because she was in, in close contact with that person, she said, let me just sit down in my house and isolate. Yeah. I can't go and be spending that so much, much money. money on just testing how much money and you know? there, are, there are people who actually just want to go to nearby countries just okay let me just relax yes and then you do your test here you get to the other country like i think um ghana is like, i think in ghana you have to pay 150 dollars for you to actually do the test mm -hmm. so I, what i don't know is if um it is both for going and coming so you enter ghana you pay 150 if you're leaving, are you also going to pay that amount? Or is when you get to Nigeria that you finally pay <sighs> so that amount like, of money? It is expensive. Mori, are, is Mori there now? Hi, sorry. Yes. Yes, I'm here. My internet went off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So, sorry, I think I came in on you guys talking about the pricing. Yes. I think that the pricing is just in a, I don't. Are you guys saying that it's just a Nigerian thing or is the world... Is the world thing because even in like the US, if you don't have like healthcare insurance, you will pay like one ninety three dollars to get your COVID test done. Mm -hmm. Because I remember, and I had to do two, so I feel like it's actually a general problem. Is it, yeah, no, so it's a the, general the thing. difference it's between actually a general yes. thing. It's just that it's just that I feel, in as much as the general thing, we know that there are countries that are. Kind of like the economy is way better. And the government is subsidizing. Yeah. Thank God we have Dr. Yemisi, you know. She's worked both in Nigeria and she's, she, she works in, in the U.S. So she'll be able to explain to us. Let me bring her in. Thank you so much, Dr. Yemisi. So Dr. Yemisi is a diplomat, American um, Board of Interna Internal Medicine, a fellow of both American College of Physicians and American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists with her area of spe specialty in internal medicine and endocrinology. Oh, all this medical terminology. God help me. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Yemisi. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure to, ha to have you. Thank you so much, you know. So, Dr. Yemisi, you've been listening to our banter about this COVID-19 because you know what? I First of all, can you um, fight COVID-19 without testing? Is it possible? It's going to be difficult, you know, because the countries that have been successful so far, you know, the Singapore's, the South Korea's, the Australia's, it's mainly with testing. Mm -hmm. it, so testing is the key. Uh, you know, we're all happy that we've been lucky in Nigeria and a lot of other African countries where we've not been able to have as much testing as desired. But... Um, Certainly, access to testing is essential before this pandemic is over. Um, like you said, I've been, I've been listening to the discussion back and forth. You know, somebody has to pay for the testing, right? Mm. So, um, and uh, we in Nigeria, we're not manufacturing neither the machine for the PCR, mm -hmm. nor the consumables or the reagents. I don't even know if we're manufacturing the swab. You know, United States had that problem in the beginning where they said the only country manufacturing the steak with the swab on top of it was from Italy. So if we're not manufacturing any or all of the components, mm -hmm. then we're dependent on importing everything. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now compared to say last year, we now have the luxury of different types of testing for different situations. So going back to the issue of affordability, I don't, I don't think there's anybody on earth that would not say they've not had a COVID scare. Yeah. We've all had a cough, you know, <laughs> or a cold, or an ache. Everybody has had one symptom or the other, and your mind will say, oops, do I need to test? So this is an apt discussion. <laughs> Dr. Yemisi. You know, you just think, do I need to tell you? Don't think of the money again. Mm -mm, let me just go and buy orange. I don't think I have it. <laughs> <laughs> your faith has to come back. If you've not had faith for a very long time, uh, your faith... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so know, because you know, and, and this was what brought, brought about the conversation because I was just thinking in my head, you keep shouting that it is spreading, it is spreading, it is spreading, and people care less in this, in this Nigeria, they are not even bothered. But when you calculate it, if you give a hungry man on the street 50,000 naira to go and do COVID tests, do you think he will take that money to go and something that can feed his family for maybe another month? Yeah. So let's let me break it down in let, let, let me let me break it down in a different way. 
So you, you know, you can think of testing as surveillance, right? We just want to test the general population or big segments of the general public so that we can try to slow down the spread of disease. Or we can say, oh, symptom-based testing. Mm -hmm. I'm coughing, I have a fever, I've treated malaria, it's not going away, then I need a test. Unfortunately, government alone cannot do this, especially in Nigeria. Even here in the United States, government alone is not doing it. Um, I think this is because it's a public health nightmare. Everybody has to cheat it. So there are different ways that we can still improve our cost of testing in Nigeria. Apart from, of course, the main one would be government subsidizing the labs. So government can readily choose to subsidize the labs. I, I'm not sure if we're in a recession or depression. I think it's recession, right? Mm. We're still in the recession. Yes. The only way the economy is going to improve is if we improve pandemic, right? Mm. The new mm. president Biden said it. Every president in the world has said it. Every country whose economy has tanked in the last year has been linked to COVID. And the same thing with us in Nigeria too. So if we can improve the you know, prevalence of COVID in Nigeria, it will certainly improve our economy. Mm -hmm. So that's how government needs to look at it in terms of spending that money to subsidize testing. Mm. But apart from government, because we know the government would may, likely may not be able to afford testing for anybody that needs it. There is a huge sector of non-government that can do something about testing. Huge. Oh, you know, in Nigeria, we're the country of groups, associations. You know, we, we, we love it, just like it is in other countries. So manufacturing sector, banking sector, airline industry. You know, instead of paying for palliatives and giving somebody a box of Indomie, you can donate that money to was testing the mass testing and say instead of fifty thousand, okay, maybe we we'll, we'll, we'll choose to pay for the next one thousand COVID test. Hmm. Let's subsidize it to twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Twenty thousand is beyond the reach of a lot of people, but it might make a lot more people test because the problem is that if you, especially if you're symptomatic, if you're asymptomatic, you might even say why bother. But if you're symptomatic and you don't test and you keep getting treated for malaria, then you're spreading it to others, hmm. your family, your friends, market, your work environment. So if all these different groups in the society can spend money to subsidize testing, either through the government or through the private sector, it will go a long way. And I think once people know that it's affordable, then you can go test, right? If they say 10,000 instead of 50,000, a lot more people will do it. Hmm. I don't know if sure. you do everybody. Yeah. Even here in the United States, you need to have insurance, you know, like the previous speaker was saying. But there are instances where you can still test without having any money or having insurance. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches do drive through testing. They advertise it on TV all the time. A church will just come up and say, we want to test 500 people. Mm. You can do drive-through testing over the weekend. So you can choose to go test just to know if you have it or not. Or you can say, oops, I've been coughing for four or five days. Let me go test. Mm. You know, must or must do it. Um, schools do it. So a lot of non-governmental associations do this. Mm. And I think that's where we need to start looking into. Okay. Our, our mosques, our churches, they all need to start looking into absolutely jennifer hmm. okay um so let's say the government decides to reduce the cost and then you get a lot of people coming in to do the test now we also know that we also have to consider social distancing even in the hospital because one of the reasons um i was telling my family members and friends that oh i think i might have to go to the test because i'm not feeling so well and then somebody goes oh don't go to the hospital. That's where people are catching the COVID the most. And I actually have a very big problem with that because I'm sure there are people with legit fears like that. And um, I feel like maybe hospitals have to put people's minds at ease. At first, I didn't think of that until a friend had to mention it. And then she sowed that seed and that seed has been growing. <laughs> it has actually been growing because she said she has heard about people who went to the hospital to get tested. And... They actually did not have COVID, but by the time they came back home, they caught COVID. 
Well, you know, it's it, it's a realistic problem because even in our homes, right, we, we don't have enough space for one person to self-isolate in one bedroom yeah. and the rest of the family to use the rest of the house. You know, a lot of us don't even have enough space. So not to talk of, uh, let's say, a typical private hospital where they may also not have that luxury of having a dedicated space. But, you know, when, when problems arise, we all have to rise to the occasion. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's convenient for anybody to isolate, even at home, yeah. or the family members. But it's only patients that have moderate to severe disease, their oxygen level is dropping, they are really sick, they really need hospitalization. I think mm -hmm. even in like, Lagos State is doing home-based care. So if somebody tests positive, it might be best to actually know <laughs> that that individual is positive and then find a way to self-isolate at home as opposed to say, well, there's no way for me to isolate, so mm -hmm. why bother testing? Mm -hmm. Because then if that individual is positive, then they may you know, unwillingly spread it to other family members. And, and that's how the disease stays persistent. So as long as the virus keeps finding a host to go into and replicate, this COVID is not going to go away, which hopefully when the vaccine comes and becomes widely available, then, you know, we'll have a solution. And even that will take time. Okay. So, but I, I think the conversation needs to move away from, say, the capacity of that one doctor with a private hospital. He, just, he or she has limited resources. Yeah. I think the conversation needs to go beyond the government, MCDC or Ministry of Health, the conversation really needs to go into the society. Hmm. So there are lots of, man, like, I remember there was a big issue about meat plants, mm -hmm. prisons, you know, in all that April, May, June of last year in the United States, where COVID was just spreading like wildfire. And, you know, so the, we have tons of industries, we have tons of factories. Hmm. So those are all things that the, peop, the owners of those industries can, as a corporate responsibility, incorporate to say okay we will do surveillance testing for all our staff you know working in the factory and now there are rapid tests it's not everybody that needs <sighs> a pcr test so there are rapid tests okay let me see yeah this matter is plenty but let me come to mori i'll come back to you again <laughs> mori <laughs> mm -hmm. so i just i just want to know can the world and the, this question is for dr mc so can the world ever you know, go back to what it was post COVID. You know, pre COVID, you can mean. actually pre pre COVID. I beg your pardon. People can actually travel and be free and you know do roller coasters without mask. If the question, if the answer is yes, what 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 time frame are we actually looking at? <laughs> If are I you planning your trip for answer, the future? Well, right, you know, Doctor Emmy will be a billionaire. She had that answer. <laughs> I know. You know. The day we stop hoping, we're in trouble. Mm. So no, no matter how bad it looks, we have to stay optimistic. I, I think it's possible. It might take some time. It might take a long time. But it's certainly possible. If, if the world can eradicate smallpox, you know, polio, mm. from countries and continents and nations, this yeah. too will, can go away. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the whole thing has been politicized in different ways in different countries. And now whatever is happening in a little town in remote America is going to affect what's happening in the little town in South Africa or in Nigeria. We're all connected now. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly possible. Timeline is problematic. But as this year progresses, right, more and more vaccines are becoming mainstream, they are coming online. I think as more vaccines become available and a lot more countries have access to vaccine, eventually we will hit that herd immunity. Hmm. You know? Of course, the virus too is fighting. The virus is mutating. Yeah, I was going to come better. there. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's mutating. Yeah, you know what, Doctor Ebisi, let us take yeah. a break because I was going to come there. I said this one, and they said they found a uh, vaccine. You are vac you are taking the vaccine, and they said the virus is mutating, okay. so we don't even know what's happening. So it's just so tricky. Um, but we'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation and take some of your messages. Stay with us. We'll be right back.